This is Rafflesia filipensis, one of the smallest of the largest flowers in the world. This is quite a special species. This particular one only grows on this mountain, Mount Benahau. And what is perhaps even more interesting is that when it first was discovered in the 19th century, it had not been found in about a hundred years. Only in 2006 it was rediscovered. It's very rare. Not only does it only occur on this mountain, but there's only very few sites known where, where the species grows. Now, if you get up real close to this flower, you notice something peculiar. And that it smells really bad. And as I'm sitting here, flies are all around me, waiting for a chance to get into the flower. To get right in there where the smell is coming from. And that's where they pick up the pollen. The pollen grains are then transported to, a new, uh, to another flower, where hopefully fertilization occurs. Rafflesia flowers usually only stay open for a few days. Then they wilt and die if it's a male flower or will develop the fruit if it's a female flower and fertilization has been achieved. That's quite spectacular that the plant puts so much energy in producing such a large flower that is only around for a little while. Here you can see an open flower but you can also see right at the base a flower bud. See how large it is? So this will perhaps take maybe a week or two and then it will start flowering and by then the large flower that it is sitting next to will be almost completely gone or will have already started developing into a fruit. Julie is going to check if this is a male or female flower. For that she'd have to put her hand in the opening of the flower underneath a disc like structure and that's where the anthers are found if this is a male plant. Now I'm going to zoom in on her finger to show you what she recovered. You may see a bit of sticky substance, a bit yellowish. Now these are the pollen grains so that means that here we're looking at a male flower. This particular species has uh, different male and female flowers although there are also some Rafflesia species which seem to be bisexual. This is another site of Rafflesia philippensis and here you can nicely see flowers in different stages of development. First of all you see a bud here. It's quite a big bud and maybe in a week or so, maybe a bit longer it will open. Keep in mind that the actual plant itself is growing inside of the roots that are underground here. So these are the roots of the host plant. Now out of these roots come the flower buds, which of course start real small and then grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And ultimately these black bracts that you see will be pushed aside by the flower itself. Here you see that flower. This one is a bit misformed, but you can clearly see the petal-like structures and the opening um, where you can find the reproductive parts. Now this flower probably stays good for about maybe a week or so, depends a little bit on the weather conditions, but it, um, it will wilt real soon and then in not too much time it will look like this one. This is an old senescent flower. Now if this is a male flower um, it will quickly deteriorate. Is it, if it's a female flower then these petal like structures will fall off, that will deteriorate but in the inside a big and sturdy fruit will develop. This is Tetrastigma. Tetrastigma is a genus in the grapevine family. Now it is um, well known for being the only genus of plants that Rafflesia parasitizes. So this plant grows right where we have seen some Rafflesia flowers and buds emerging from the forest floor. So Rafflesia is probably growing inside of this plant. You would only know if you see the flowers, because the rest of the body of Rafflesia is inside of these twigs. 